because you are here in this place. Thank you because you are present tonight. We give you praise for what you are going to do and what you are doing right now. Thank you because indeed we will receive supernatural help because you are Ebenezer, your helper. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to pray for five minutes before we sit down. Is that okay? We're going to pray for five minutes. Please help me with the sound. I think I lost my voice. This is the last day of this summit. You can't go back the same. I want you to ask God in the next five minutes for an empowerment like no other that will bring and cause a shift in your life. Deep your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, an empowerment. Knowledge that will transform my mind. Grace that will empower my life. This is the last day of the feast. This is the last day of this summit. I cannot go back the same. Are you praying? Everybody is praying. Everybody is praying. I want you to cry to God. Cry to God. I want you to cry to God. Let there be a spiritual, radical, spiritual, mental, financial transformation in my life. He says, I have not called the sons of Jacob to seek me in vain. Open your mouth and pray. Somebody is praying. Call upon the God of Jacob. Tonight is a night of destiny. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Tonight is a night of change. Change. There must be a shift on to another level. Everybody spring. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Don't get tired. This is how we settle things in the spirit. Lord, an anointing must come on my life today. There has to be a change. There has to be a shift. Another level of glory. Another level of grace.
the garment of shame and reproach be taken away. more seconds. Keep praying. God just showed me I was directed to you. Thank God you came tonight because today is a turnaround for you. Right? Bro, Gamba. Gamba, right? Bro, Gamba now. She? Today is a turnaround for you. Please bring it down a little. You are, you really are in desperate need of divine intervention now. I'm seeing you stuck in a place. I'm seeing you stuck in a place. You are looking good outside, but inside I see you stuck in a place. And God is sending supernatural help to you. When I stood there while the worship team were ministering, as I closed my eyes, I saw an angel standing before me. And the angel is possibly as tall as this roof. I've not seen that in a long time. And I asked the Lord, who is this angel? And what's he doing here? The Lord said, the name of that angel is Ebenezer. And God pointed me directly to you. And because you have come tonight, I'm releasing that grace for supernatural help. To you. In the month of April, there's going to be a turnaround for you. In the name of Jesus. Father, tonight do something that only you can do. And we vow to give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah, and I see Hallelujah. Hallelujah, and I see Hallelujah. 
to the land of God that was slain. Let me prophesy to you with the verse. You've got times and seasons in your hands. You call for light out of the darkness. Truly you don't need a man to be the God you are. But you have chosen to call us your own. You've got times and seasons in your hands. You call for life. You don't need a man to be the God you are, but you have chosen to call me. Tonight is an avalanche of the presence of God. You be God, you know, be man. God, you know, be man, oh, Alpha, Omega, you be God, you be God, oh, you be God, you know, be man, oh, 
John, come. Tonight is your night. God is shifting you to another level. Hold my hand. Double speed, says the Spirit of God. Help me. Double speed. Double speed. And there are five other more people in the congregation now that that anointing is coming upon. Double speed. Double speed. That's what I hear. Double speed. The hand of God find them right now. Five of them. Five of them. Double speed. Take that grace now. for your family and it's a supernatural shift hold my hand father let it come upon her let it come upon her grace for shift grace for shift of levels grace for shift of levels in the name of Jesus how great you are oh You hear me. Whenever I call, don't you hear me? I'm not alone, this I know. So what can I song of praise Briefly, 
Let's try to just see what we can do tonight. And then we'll pray. You're welcome to Pneumatic. The Bible says at the last day of the feast, in John chapter 7, Jesus cried out. He said, anyone that is thirsty should come and drink. This is the last day of this summit. And I believe God that no one will live here the same. You see, more than just an enlightenment that is communicated to you through knowledge, we must trust God for the grace that causes empowerment. This kingdom is a kingdom of power. There is such a thing as the grace for empowerment. Where after you've heard everything, then an ability comes from God that makes you superhuman so that you can walk in the fullness of that which the word of God has declared. The Bible says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. It's not ordinary. There's a grace that does that. That's what separates Christianity from every other religion. And I trust God that that grace will come on somebody this night. This night, God will change the status of many, many families here. I'm telling you, I came to teach, but I sense the atmosphere already shifting. So let's just um, do a little on the scriptures and then trust the Holy Spirit for grace this night. It's already available. And Lord, we thank you. Amen. Kingdom Finance and Entrepreneurship Summit. We've been on this mountain. This is the third day now. And I'm very sure that every one of us have been blessed, especially those who followed from the first Sunday, um, those on ground and those online. We've been exploring the word of God to find out um, the grace that opens us to finances, kingdom finances. The grace that can open us to genuine wealth, wealth that comes from God. The Bible says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich but for your sake he became poor so that through his poverty we shall be rich. So it is our inheritance, not just to be spiritually minded and anointed, but to be prosperous. He says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And in Revelation chapter 13, the Bible says that the Lamb of God was slain from the foundations of the world. Meaning that the foundations of this earth was laid and was precipitated on the blood of the Lamb. What that means is that part of the salvation bargain, which was paid for by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, is genuine and authentic prosperity. If the Bible says that the foundations or the Lamb of God was slain from the foundations, it means that his blood was shed even before the earth was founded. That's to say that everything that is hidden in this earth belongs to those who are the heads of salvation. I hope you catch that. So it's not just because we like money, and this is not just about money. It's a place of true and authentic dominion that God wants to bring us into. That's why God is using this summit to bring a recalibration, a shift in our mindset so that we can arise as the last day church and enter into true dominion in terms of wealth and prosperity and frankly speaking i wish we had more days because i had so much i wanted us to look into but being that today is the last day we'll just look at something from the surface and then we'll pray and i pray that before the end of this year god will grant us grace to go back to the issue of finances there is so much i want to show us so much such that what you are going to hear today is just the tip of the iceberg 
Amen. And we trust God that his name will be glorified in Jesus name. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 21 to 22. Let's read some scriptures briefly and then we'll proceed. Media, please you will help me to be very snappy. Thank you. Put it in New King James. Then if you have TLB, I will tell you when to put it for us. Proverbs 13 verse 21 and 22. Evil pursues sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. Verse 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for who? Is stored up for who? Do you have the living Bible? Okay. Now this verse 22, okay, just give me an NLT if you have NLT. Let me see if it's, it has a closer rendition. Good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren, but the sinner's wealth passes to who? To the godly. So we see two dimensions of what we have come to know in the body of Christ as wealth transfer. In this scripture, there are two dimensions. There is the trans generational dimension and there is the translational dimension i'll try my best to just teach so that we can get the understanding and then we'll pray there is the transgenerational dimension of wealth transfer you see it in the first part of the verse it says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children that is wealth that is transferred transgenerationally the bible says if it is genuine wealth of course, the word good man there is, rep is replaced with the word righteous man. And when the Bible speaks of a righteous man, it's speaking of those who have come to um, trust God, who have come to have faith in God. It's talking about the righteousness of faith. So you and I qualify for that passage. The Bible says that if it's true and authentic as a righteous man, your wealth is supposed to outlive you to the second generation. That's transgenerational. But translational wealth is what we see in the next part of the same verse. It says the wealth of the sinner is laid up. In the New King James, it says stored up. Is that it? I like that it didn't say. It says stored up. That means it is laid up. It is kept up. In other words, there is a possibility in the kingdom where resources are transferred from certain kinds of persons to another kind of persons the bible says the wealth of the sinner so every toiling that the sinner goes through it is for one purpose as far as god is concerned that that wealth that they accumulate is given to those called the righteous i thought you would say amen it's true. This is not scam. I'm reading from the scriptures. And these are some of the truths that God must awaken in the body of Christ so that we can come into genuine control and dominion of resources. Proverbs 14 verse 11. The house of the wicked will be overthrown. But the tent of the upright will flourish. The tent of the upright will flourish. Just verse 11. The tent of the upright. In other words, why there is trouble in the camp of the wicked, in the camp of the sinners. Why they suffer from the economic, the global economic plunge. Why there is a recession. While there is a depression in, in some countries. The Bible says it is in that season. That the tent of the righteous, the abode of the righteous will flourish. And I told us last week, I said that the scripture was right when it says, When men say there is a casting down, you are supposed to say exaltation. Because it is in the midst of such circumstances that God creates a mystery system that lifts his children. Are we together? Proverbs 28, verse 8.
one who increases his possessions by usury and extortion usury simply means when you uh, add when you add up too much interest let's say somebody takes a loan and the interest on that loan to be paid back is too much so that's what usury means it says one who increases his possessions by usury or ex an extortion gathers it for him who will pity the poor that's another phase of wealth transfer that we see there how that when a man decides to go about cheating and scheming others to accumulate wealth the bible says he's doing all that waiting for a time when it will be gathered up for him who has pity on the poor so that the justice system of god can be balanced are we together so that the justice system of god cannot be tampered with well if you want to write the topic for tonight is the kingdom in bracket kingdom end time global wealth transfer agenda in bracket kingdom end time out of bracket now end time global wealth transfer agenda long topic and let's see what we can do about this by the help of the holy ghost lord breathe upon our understanding this afternoon in the name of jesus now write this down number one let me give you some common facts about wealth some common facts I'm trying to be as simple as I can so that everybody can catch up some common facts about wealth notice I didn't say riches I said wealth number one true wealth constitutes true wealth constitutes of the abundance availability and control of resources true wealth constitutes of the abundance availability and control of resources not only is it supposed to be abundant but it must be available and they must be in control of resources that's when you call it true wealth that means if you just have one house and a car that's not wealth it's available but it's not abundant and because it is not abundant you cannot claim dominion over resources if there is an economic situation in the country if you have one car one house and one million in your account there is a time you can be broke and let me tell us something wealth is not about what you have in your account no wealth is not just about material acquisitions in the business world there is something they call assets and liabilities a house can be an asset depending on how it is kept a car is a liability most of these material acquisitions that we make are liabilities because they depreciate with time true wealth is systems that have been created that on their own can generate income again and again regardless of the situation of the economy within that frame of time that's wealth true wealth is when a man can create something that works on his behalf to generate employment for others and to generate sustainable income while he uses that time for other things that's true wealth of course while he uses that time to serve god because satan is there is a battle in these last days and that battle is being fought because satan is contending for three major things in the life of every believer number one your time number two your resources number three your mind 
these are the three greatest points of contention between the kingdom of darkness and believers your time your resources your mind because if satan can control these three things in your life you are a slave and sadly your time is actually your most precious asset now satan has stolen into the ignorance of many christians to make them think that there are other things that they can use to replace their time your time is your greatest asset everything you have your time was expended to bring it including sitting down to listen to me your time is being expended and your time is the greatest and the only unit that can quantify the value of your life so when someone wastes your time he's wasting what your life so true wealth is what constitutes of the abundance and availability and control of resources number two all wealth comes from god let me delete a lie that the enemy has brought to us maybe because of nigerian films or because of um, what what the secular people do all wealth comes from god all wealth including the one that the native doctor will give you the bible says once has he spoken twice as have i heard that what power notice he didn't say all power both king james and new king james i believe that's psalms 62 he says that power belongs to god and the bible says that he gives us power to get not to make if it was to make wealth then that means we can say that all wealth does not come from god but the bible says to get meaning that it has been made that's why this first scripture we read it says it is stored up it is laid up it takes understanding to accentuate the position where that wealth is and break into supernatural abundance all wealth comes from who from god number three god is the source god is the source men are the channels god is the source but men are the channels men whether they are christians or unbelievers or native doctors or systems that men have created god remains the source of all wealth but men are the channels the problem with our generation is that we have inversed that equation we think that men are the source and god is a channel so we we are treading upon grounds dangerous grounds where we are almost using god as a means to an end the end is wealth meanwhile god remains the source the bible says in psalm 75 that promotion comes not from the south west or east he said but god is the judge for he exalts one and brings down the other it is within his power to make a man wealthy even if it was a native doctor god allowed it and you need to read your bible very well read proverbs the bible says even the wicked were created by god for the day of judgment so the fact that a native doctor knows how to outsource wealth from another dimension that is not routed through the christ does not mean that that wealth will last you can't even call it wealth are we together so god is the source men are the channels these are just common facts just for us to build a foundation and then we'll begin the lesson number four men and this is very powerful i'm going to spend a little time to talk about this men are god's storehouses men are god's storehouses psalm 17 verse 13 to 14 
Let me delete a mindset in us. I wish you had the Living Bible translation. I wish you had it. Let me delete a mindset from us. Or I think, let me help us upgrade. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it says, bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse, right? Pastor, you're welcome. Good to see you. Bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse. And of course, we know that scripture was during the time where the Aaronic priesthood was, was still in vogue. The storehouse was the physical temple. Now, the job of the priest and the Levites was to ensure that they stayed faithful and fully committed to the service of the Lord. And then there were certain offerings that the people were supposed to bring into the temple, which was meant for the sustenance of the priest. At this time that Malachi rose up, the children of Israel had long, or Judah had returned from captivity. And they were in the process of building, rebuilding the temple. But then at some point they stopped giving the offerings. And then the priest had to abandon the work in the temple and go to farm so that they can earn a living. So God raised Malachi and began to correct the children of Judah. That the reason why you, you, you know everything is in shambles is because you have allowed the priest to leave my service and go to other things. That's the reason why there is no longer fire burning in the wound, in the, in the altar. That's the reason why my presence is no longer with you. And that's the reason why you are no longer prosperous. So he told them to return to him and bring all the tithe. But when we switch into the new covenant, where the temple is no longer a physical temple, but a habitation in men. When we switch into the new covenant, where the priesthood is no longer the ironic priesthood from the tribe of Levi, but the Melchizedek priesthood demonstrated by Jesus, the storehouse is no longer a physical temple. It's now people. And I'll show you. Psalm 17. Do you have it there? Did you open it there? Verse 13. I said what men are God's storehouse arise O lord confront him cast him down deliver my life from the wicked with your sword next verse with your hand from men O lord from men of the world who have their portion in this life and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure first of all the word portion there is the word inheritance or possession so he's saying that men who have their possessions their material possessions that's what it means when he says men who have their portion in this life he's talking about men who have acquired material possessions isn't it whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure now let's interpret it literally the belly there speaks of of course we know it's talking about the belly of a man and then it also speaks of the life of men who have accumulated so much material wealth the bible says it is not that they accumulated it but that god filled them with his treasure that's why i said every wealth comes from god they are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possession for their babes so if the bible uses the word treasure you need to understand that a treasure is something that is safely guarded and stored away isn't it come on are you with me if there is a treasure there is need for a safe and that's why you have storehouses where important things are stored away till the time of their use now the bible says that rich men who are unbelievers they are merely storehouses that God has hidden his treasure or wealth in. If we interpret that scripture in light of the New Testament, the word belly also speaks of the spirit of a man. That's why I believe that wealth is first of all spiritual before it is financial. And I'll prove it to you today. And leave the rest of their possession so they have accumulated so much and they are determined to leave it for their children and their children's children 
And David was saying, deliver me from these kinds of people. Meanwhile, where we read from the first in Proverbs 13, the Bible says that the wealth of the hidden, the wealth of the sinner is, the, is what? Laid in store. So what he thinks he will pass to his children will not go to them. He will only die and discover that the wealth has been transferred from them. I will show you there are scriptures for that. That's the reason why in this city where we are, there were men who were very wealthy in the 70s, in the 80s, who are dead now, and their children are poor. Yes or no? I don't need to call names, you know. And by I don't need to call names, doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. I just don't want to call names. Because you would think that now that the man has acquired everything, his children will inherit it and pass it down. But you see, they don't know that wealth is a spiritual thing. It has wings. It can, it can translate. It can fly. And any man that understands the laws by which the spirit realm can be manipulated can get the fullness of Proverbs 13.22. And that's why we are here this night. So men are God's storehouses. On the sixth day of creation, God, God created two creatures. Right? There were two creatures. God created man and God created beast. The difference between the two of them was in the purpose for their creation and in the blessing that was said to them. When God created every beast and cattle of the earth, he said, be fruitful and multiply. But when he created man, he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue and have dominion. So the dominion side, the dominion mandate of that blessing separated man from beast. Man was created in the image and the likeness of God. Beasts were created in the image of the earth. Man can also... Be symbolic of those who are saved in Christ. Those who mind heavenly things. Beasts, because they are not in the image of God, are those who mind earthly things. I hope you are following me. Listen. Pay attention this night. That's the reason why, if you read the book of Daniel, you see a disparity between those two. Daniel was a man in Babylon, in the midst of beasts. When we talk about something created in the image and likeness of God, we are not just talking about, you know, image as in literally alone. We are talking about one who has aligned himself to the purpose of God and is living the full expression of the intent of God's heart. Every man that has not the understanding of the purpose of God for their creation and is living a life of rebellion on their own you can classify them under beasts if you read the bible you see many times where the bible used the word beast as a metaphor to describe men so i'm not just talking about animals i'm talking about two different species of men now it was the man that god created after his image and likeness that god gave dominion to god gave him dominion over the beasts and where we read this Psalms um, 17. Go back there, please. This Psalm 17, verse 14. If you read another translation, the Bible calls them beasts. These men there, if you read other translations, they are called beasts. Whose belly you are filled with hidden treasure. Meaning that every material wealth that they gather, because they are not in the image and likeness of God, speaking of purpose, and speaking of the dominion mandate they are only storehouses to carry the wealth till the time when the man in god's image is matured enough to lay hold of that possession galatians chapter 4 verse 1 he say a hair a child though is a hair yet being a child is kept under tutors and governors until the time i pointed by the father So the fact that these things actually belong to us 
because we are now made in the image of God through Christ doesn't mean that we can lay hold of it immediately because you must understand that the man that God created was an adult when God created him was fully matured so there is a place of maturity from childhood to sonship in the kingdom it is when you get to that point of sonship where you are now the image and likeness of the Christ who is the image of God that is when that transfer can happen till then every unbeliever is a storehouse that's what the Bible says and just in case there's an unbeliever here I'm sorry get repent today so that you will no longer be a storehouse number two storehouse there are men because God is the custodian of all authority and power in the universe and I've said it before that men are God's divine institutions on the earth God created man to represent his government on earth so there are things that God should do there are possibilities in God that all of creation on earth should access that God created certain men and place these possibilities in them so that creation around them can access God through those men by that I'm talking about spiritual inheritance vested into certain people called sons of God so that when you call a man a man of God he's not just a man of God because he's a pastor he's a storehouse spiritually there are anointings and graces whether you see it or not that he carries that opens access to men to the possibilities that God has created to exist on earth that's number two storehouse amen now let's begin the teaching the topic is what end time global wealth transfer agenda first of all we must understand God's end time agenda and this is God's end time agenda because we are living in the end times we are living in the last days the part of this age where there is going to be a consummation of the purposes of God in other words a fulfillment of all that God has planned from the very beginning we are living at the peak of this age and God's end time agenda is that his bride the church assumes her rightful place of dominion over the systems of this earth the economy inclusive that's God's agenda God was revealed and manifested in Christ and Christ has been exalted as the sole administrator and the Lord over all that God has created but Christ has that throne in heaven now the reason why God created the earth is so that the earth can become a colony of the kingdom that God has created and established in the heavens where he is ruler over all so the earth is a material display of the government of God and its functionality as intended from the beginning now we have been saved brought out of many tribe religions and you know tongue and all of that and we are the church the bride of Christ the Bible says to the 10 Ephesians 3 10 that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known now by the church to principalities and powers in the heavenly places so Christ has dominion over all things but on earth that dominion will be exemplified because from the beginning man was the one that was created to have dominion not spirits on earth man so God will have to look for people that carry the uniform of man of mankind that will exert that dominion of ease on earth and those people are called the church so the church represents the lordship of christ over all creation on earth now god's intention is that the church will come into the fullness of her dominion mandate 
control over all the systems on the earth because when God made man he made man last but man had dominion over all he created and the Bible says this dominion goes beyond just human beings it says to principalities and powers by a wisdom that is mysterious and manifold that's God's end time agenda God's end time agenda is not just to save men and take men to heaven but to save men and prepare men those men so that they can bring heaven on earth it says thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is where it will take the church to do that and you and i being part of the church are living in a time where that word necessarily must be fulfilled we are living in the dispensation of all dispensations the age of all age everybody angels demons are watching to see this agenda of god being fulfilled that's the reason why we started the series with the gospel of the kingdom and i told you that in this last day satan is opening the greatest part of his asnas on hell on earth from hell because his intention is to see that god will not fulfill that mandate of dominion you know why because prior to what many of us have believed that the rapture will happen we will just escape you know some people believe in post tribulation mid tribulation pre tribulation so many christians because of the films we have watched we think that we will be under suppression and then rapture will happen and we escape no no sir read your bible very well the church will come into full dominion and control jesus said the only sign that the end has come is not famine and wars and plagues he said these are only the beginning of bad pangs excuse me when a woman is about to give birth the sign is labor pains jesus said when you see all of these natural disasters happening it is just like the labor pains that comes on a woman why so that she can give birth so the real deal is not the natural disaster we are facing so i cannot tell you that things will get better in society i can only tell you one thing that in the midst of gross darkness the glory of god is rising on the people called the church so much so that they will abandon their systems the bible says gentiles will come to your light and their kings that formulated those systems that have crashed and caused them harm will come to the brightness of your rising so i don't know if i should pray that things should get better in society what i should pray is that the church should come into her place of dominion so that our economy in the church becomes the economy of the world let me tell you something it's more than just a building when we say church it's more than just a building the first prototype of church in scripture was abraham the bible says god called him out and blessed him Abraham was so blessed he had an economy he had a political system in his house he had a military that could go for war Abraham existed as a as one man but as a nation that was the first prototype of church so the church is supposed to boast of our own military might political system that surpasses that of the world a social economy system you see that's the reason why some prayers we pray it looks like god is not answering it the reason is not because god cannot answer it but it's because god has already answered it and i told you that god will not do what he has already done so rather than pray for god to change we should pray for god to download wisdom to us now so that we can know god's current agenda what he's doing by the manifold wisdom of his spirit supplied hallelujah so that is god's end time agenda in isaiah chapter 2 the bible says from verse 1 that in the latter days in the last days the mountain of the lord's house shall be established upon all the other mountains the word mountains speaks of spheres of influence in society it says the mountain the influence of the lord's house which is the church will be exalted such that it will humble the systems of the world and all nations shall flow into it he said then shall they say one to another let us go to the house of the lord 
that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his path if that does not happen Jesus will not come let me tell you if that does not happen Jesus will not come so we should quit being saved for heavenly relevance and we are earthly irrelevant to begin to position ourselves in where God, what God is doing right now because it's a total takeover that should happen in our time I'm telling you so that's God's agenda what is kingdom wealth transfer well if you don't get it as I'm reading it just look for the tape after now kingdom wealth transfer is God's divine plan you can put God's divine ultimate plan because I don't see any other plan bigger than this one from my studies of scripture God's divine ultimate plan to bring the church to a state of dominion over the resources of this earth for the exertion of kingdom influence over the systems of mankind by God's manifold wisdom to allow him reign supreme. Let me take it again. Kingdom wealth transfer is God's divine plan. God's divine ultimate strategy you can put to bring the church to a state of dominion over the resources of this earth for the exertion of kingdom influence over the systems of, of mankind by God's manifold wisdom to allow him, God, reign supreme. That means we can't say God reigns supreme on earth when our dominion does not extend to the place of resources. The Bible says in Psalm 2, he said, why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Isn't it? Let's go on. He say the kings of the earth and what the rulers set themselves. Hold on. He would have, if he had said kings, that would have been okay. But he said the kings and rulers. The king speaks of the political system, political governance on earth. But the rulers there speaks of those that have control of resources. Because he that has the gold makes the rules. Let me tell you. The political system can expire after four years, eight years, depending on the electoral system. But the rulers can remain from generation to generation. And that's what Satan is planning. He's trying to copy God's strategy. And he's trying to promote a satanic kind of dominion that, is, that, that, that has dynasty, ancestral dynasty. So the father was in a cult and he became wealthy and his children, the spirits will visit them so that they can become part of that cult and become wealthy. Why? To the intent that they will broadcast the dominion of Satan. And just in case you don't know, that's why you have cults like Illuminati and all of that. Now the problem is the church doesn't even have anyone. All we do is to sit down complain about the strategies of the world not knowing that we are in the center of a strategy i said it two weeks ago i said the church is not a building it's a strategy it's a plan it's a secret agent secret service undercover mission that's why even if you close the church the, the, the four walls of this building the church cannot stop cannot die in fact persecution multiplies the church so the earlier we understand that we are a strategy, not a building. We are an organism, not an organization. We are an entity, not just the gathering of individuals. The better for us. So it no longer becomes a pastor and members. It becomes the fivefold and kingdom agents that are being trained. Because the Bible says, if all of us are children of God, according to scripture, isn't it? The Bible says, happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. Speaking of children. Say that like arrows. An arrow is an offensive weapon. Meaning that if you are carefully discipled the kingdom way, you are like an arrow to the camp of the enemy. Not the victim. 
because satan has made many of us feel we are the that's why we go for prayers again and again we visit prayer houses again and that's why i like the testimony of that young man after the series of faith he went back i like that testimony must it be every time that they lay hands on you when will the word of god find expression through you there's another testimony too there's a brother I don't, he may be listening now and i pray he allows me share this testimony I'm, I'm sure he's listening online he listened to that series of faith and he does business he said he has been looking for a particular customer since last year after the last series the following week he met that customer and he made a profit of eight million that week he just had the message you you are coming here every day I'm sure he's listening from Kano, I believe. So friends, this kingdom wealth transfer agenda thing is an agenda and is a very serious issue. We, our dominion is not complete if we don't have dominion over resources. And we are living in the last days that I can describe as a season of warfare. There is serious contention between the camp of God and the camp of the devil. A battle for resources. A battle for control. Satan is creating mind control systems. Why? Because his, his intention is to usurp or to create a parallel government from the government of God. And see to it that his government has dominion on the earth. Much more than God's intended desire. So when we are talking about kingdom wealth transfer, we are not just talking about it because we like money in church. No, sir. And it's not bad to like money. It's only bad when you love money. The Bible says the love of money, not the liking of money. To like something means there are conditions that thing will meet that is suitable with you. And you say, I should not like money when you can pay my bills. Everything you see, this service you are enjoying, is powered by money, not just by the anointing. Money. What you are sitting on was bought by money, not by prophecy. What you are wearing was bought by money, not by anointing. What you will eat when you get back home will be bought by money, not by what faith declaration. And I, I don't know, I don't know, but if you any if you want to see real slavery real slavery is when somebody is impoverished in resources and has to depend on another person real slavery is not chains and handcuffs no real slavery is when somebody or a group of people are deprived of resources when they have to depend for existence the bible says in proverbs chapter 22 verse 2 the rich and the poor have this in common the lord is the maker of them all god made them men but they separated themselves rich and poor he didn't say rich man he said rich anything anything as far as he's rich he has the abundance availability and control of resources and then verse 7 of the same chapter, it says that the rich rule it over the poor. Just like the borrower is slave to the lender. You know, I see all kinds of things online now and I want to discourage you from doing it. There are different kind of apps that are coming out now that you can, uh, you can borrow, you can take loan. Is it, isn't it? They even do the advert very well. So just click on this, click on this, and then you can withdraw any, you can take loan of any amount you want. That is slavery. God bless the owners of those apps, but I, I don't do that. Including this thing, uh, what they could, this thing on MTN where you can borrow airtime. Maybe two, three years ago was the last time I borrowed airtime. Maybe. Never. Never. Because one of the greatest qualities of prosperity, kingdom prosperity, is contentment. Paul said in Philippians 4, I have learned to, 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 to abound when I have many and when I'm in a beast. 
creating, creating systems so that you can take loan. Loans that your children will come and pay. As a matter of fact, that's the problem with many nations now. Nigeria being one of them. The, lo- the debt on Nigeria now is not we that will pay it. It's our children. They are, they are, their generation is being enslaved. And the painful thing is that when they borrow that money, you don't know what they use the money for. Those projects will outlive that government to another government. And they keep borrowing loans, you know, taking loans. Trillions upon trillions of Naira. And we are okay. Some of you, you don't, it doesn't consign you because it's not affecting you in a way. <laughs> but let me tell you the truth. Every one of us, that loan is, being ex- is exerted on you. And if care is not taken, if God does not raise gospel giants in the place of wealth, our children will be sl- enslaved. You remember the story of the prophet who came to Elisha? The woman, rather, said, my, you, you know, my husband, your servant, feared the Lord. And he was an anointed prophet. And of course, prophets were supposed to carry prosperity. But the Bible says he died a debtor. And his two children, who are supposed to inherit the prophetic anointing, and, the, you know, release destinies of territories, they were going to be enslaved by creditors. If you don't get concerned about these things, a time is coming where revival can break out in Christian circles and almost immediately be killed. It happened in Acts. Revival broke out among the, the disciples. But there was somebody in power. His name was Herod. And if not for the intervention of God, Herod would have usurped what God was doing. So we are praying for the fire to fall, anointing, anointing. But we should understand that true revival is not complete except there is a place of resource added to the equation. Otherwise, we will come here, fall under the anointing, live here and go back as slaves to a hidden generation. The borrower is slave to the lender. And that's the reason why it's, it, I said it's going to happen by a manifold wisdom. The word manifold is the word many-sided or mysterious. Because right now, right now, the system of Babylon is controlling the wealth and the resources of nation. As it stands now, the church is in jeopardy. As it stands now, when it comes to resources, we are limited. There is only so much we can do. How many churches own Christian TV stations in Africa? And some of them that own those TV stations are in debt. Just try and visit, is it TBN or where? Just, there will always be a moment where they are raising offering. And they will have to beg and beg and beg. Even invite preachers that will come and say, John 3.16, so $31.06. Isn't it? And do all kinds of manipulation because there is no resource, there is no money. So the church in itself right now, our state now, we are impoverished. Forget about these cars you see there. That's not wealth. That's not wealth. What if a law comes and to and that law comes to ban all Christian programs from government TV stations or secular stations? What are we going to do? How are we going to get the gospel out? The Bible says, how shall they hear except the word is preached? And how shall the word be preached except someone is sent? When the Bible says sent, what it means is all the resources put together and the backup power that can make those men go with the gospel. That's the reason why this kingdom wealth transfer thing I came to tell you that is a reality that God has declared in our days. And some of you that are listening to me, the reason why God brought you to this summit, both here and online, is because there is a grace that must come on your life. Because you are the next solution to this impoverishment that Satan is about to bring us into. The Bible says there was a time where women were eating their children in the Bible because of lack of food. And it's happening now. They may not literally eat their children. But when they force a young lady who is not up to 18 to get married to an unbeliever simply because he has money, is that not the, cha- the destiny of that child you have eaten? 
two days ago I was <laughs> I was I, I, I decided to take public transport and I was in, in a tricycle and two ladies I hope they are not here. I hope they are not here. If they are here, you forgive me. They entered the Napep and they started discussing. And I had one of them say, he say, I'm going to meet my boyfriend now. I want to ask him how much is his salary so that I will know if he can take care of me and him. Because guest care are not ready to suffer at all. Are not ready to suffer at all. She said it with so much emphasis. And I kept quiet and allowed them talking. And these were Christians, actually. Some of you are laughing here, ladies. Are you not sure that's your confession as well? Ask, it, ask an average church lady now. Where is the Mr. Right? They must show you somebody driving a car. They must show you somebody. Or at least he has a his reputation is that he works with a, a non-governmental organization. Why? Because they are looking for security. Now you can't blame them sometimes. Because you don't know what poverty can do. Poverty is killing people much more than the pandemic. Yes. There are people dying of hunger on it. You need to see the, the U, United Nations goals for the last 10 years. 17 of them number one has been zero hunger and up till now they've not been able to achieve it humanitarian staff am i making sense those of you that work with food program and all of that well, that is more dangerous than hiv let me tell you if you have been hungry before you understand that you go around and see some of our young ladies in the university there instead of them to come and st settle down and study graduate with a good degree and become useful agents in society they enter into modernized prostitution what you call becoming but girlfriends to, to military men and all of, all of that why because of money and so it will shock you to know that some of them that money that they are gaining that you are blaming them for is what is helping their parents at home you don't know You wait until it's time for exams and you have not paid your school fees. And then because of how much, 20 something thousand, your, your entire future is about to be jeopardized. This is, this is the force. Poverty is a force. That's what Egypt represented. It's not just, poverty is not just lack of money. It's a force. The Bible says, a little sleep, a little slumber. So shall thy poverty come upon you like an armed man. It's a force. And if we don't do something to enter into this kingdom wealth transfer, this is the least you have seen. When, the, when nations went on lockdown, people died more because the economy of nations were sabotaged. All of a sudden, jobs, people were losing their jobs. Stay at home for three days was impossible for some people. Why? Lack of resources. Revival will never be complete until we get this part of the indices. If there is a grace that can make men fall down and see visions, that same grace must be translated into multiplying their finance. That same grace must be translated into creating supernatural streams of income. The Bible says, if you have about, you, you, that you are bound in other grace, see that you are bound in this grace also. 2 Corinthians 8. So don't tell me it's a, it's a gospel of mammon. Forget about some people who preach and say money, money is the root of evil. No, see, it's not true. The love of money. And let me tell you something. The fact that as a preacher, I'm impoverished and I'm broke. And poverty is causing frustration to me. And there are other people prospering. That does not mean I must turn the gospel so that I can bring men into my own. You understand that? You know what God told me last two years ago? God said, son, preach the gospel whether your life looks like it or not. If the Bible says it became poor so that we will be rich, there's no spirituality there. Some people say, oh no, the spirit, we are blessed in spiritual. No, no, no. The Bible says he became poor so that through his poverty, we shall be what? Rich. That's it. Leave it like that. Now, whether you are rich or poor as a man of God, preach that gospel. After all, Paul said that we, being poor, yet in our poverty, making many rich. So friends, 
God is about to introduce us to a system where it will not just be about buying one car or one house. Begin to shake yourself from that mindset now. I'm talking about control of resources. Where if there is a lockdown, you can stand in front of your street and feed everybody there for one week. And it doesn't shake you. Somebody can stand up in church and say, Pastor, all the technical bills for this year I'll pay. Somebody will say, Pastor, how much is the bus services? To and fro, I'm paying from now till May. That's the kind of wealth I'm talking about. Wealth that has wings. Wealth that is a weapon. Wealth that has a motion. Something that moves beyond you and your family. Where you can enter command and see a young lady almost falling into prostitution and tell her, no, 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 you are bigger than this, come. Take her in, in your car, take her to a boutique, buy clothes for her, and then put something in her account and tell her, anytime you are in need from school, just call me. And you do that free of charge. That's the kind of grace I'm talking about. If there is a grace like that, it must come upon us today. I'm telling you. Wealth that three, four, five persons can sit down, look at a local government, and then plan a gospel invasion. We are going there for five days. And in these five days, there will be distribution of food, free distribution of food, free medical welfare and outreach. There will be crusade morning and evening. We are going to get all the equipment. How much is the bill? Six million. We are, we are paying for it. Forget about the church post. And then in five days, you break shackles of witchcraft that has held generations in that village it's, let me tell you even that deliverance for it to come it takes money somehow somehow the bible says how shall they hear except someone is sent I told you two weeks ago I said now I'm trusting God to start with a helicopter at least because I've seen that part of my part of my assignment will be to preach in some of these villages and if you know me for one thing, I hate road journey. I hate road journey. By the time you arrive there, you are too sick to preach. You have not been there before, ba? You know, we have, we, have, we have done that now. I've we've done a little missionary, so I understand what... So that from here, we can just lift with the helicopter, reach there. Start the crusade for one week. Finish, and then we create skill acquisition. I'm See... I'm talking about there are things we will do. This gospel will be preached greater when there is influence of resources than just Jesus loves you. They never hear them before. Go outside and share tracts to people, they'll tear it. But just go outside and be sharing free t shirts and tell them you don't even need to tell them there's a program. They will come and help you broadcast the program because of free t shirts. He that has the goal makes the rules. And if we are not there yet, it's time for us to sit down and get this thing right. Thank God for your 250,000 naira salary. But brother, if you must do anything for the kingdom, that one is still too small. We can start from there, but it's still too small. How can God open to us channels of wealth? Even if they don't pay you salary for three months, it doesn't shake you. Not that they don't pay you salary for one month and you can't pray again. Have you seen that one? The reason why you go to offices, the reason why you see, once they delay them for one month, you begin to see all kinds of solidarity chants, all kinds of rep. Well, the reason is because they are all enslaved to that thing they call salary. I'm sorry to say this. I bless God for everybody earning salary. But if you remain in, as a salary earner, that is disguised slavery. Because the Bible says the rich rules over the poor. It is more blessed to give. That hand that is giving you at the end of the month, like it or not, it has dominion over you. Let's start a conference from tomorrow now in the morning. Somebody will call you by 8 a.m. Say, my friend, where are you? Say, no, I'm in my church. We are holding an Easter. My friend, leave that place and come to... And before you know it, they will go and apologize to pastor. Pastor, sorry. Why? Because somebody is paying their bills. Or better put, somebody is their slave master. But if wealth comes from God, then God must supply that wisdom for us to tap into it. That wealth that is stored up must be released to the sons of the kingdom. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 21. I, I think I can round up here now. 
22, 21 and 26. Ecclesiastes 2. For there is a man whose labor is with wisdom, knowledge and skill. Yet he must leave his heritage to a man who has not labored for it. Look at this. This is the, this is the interpretation of the adage in Nigeria they call monkey they walk. This is it. The Bible says there is a man who is labored with wisdom, knowledge and skill. That skill there, what does it talk to? What does it what picture does it print to your memory? It's talking about the systems of this world. High-tech systems and all that you have around. The Bible says that the work of the unbeliever is that God puts all this on them so that they can gather and when it has become a, a an inheritance kind of wealth, another man will come for it. He said, this also is vanity and a great evil. Give us verse 22, then we'll read verse 26. For what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart, with which he has stored under the sun? In another translation, I think the living Bible, he says that this is unfair. It's unfair that one man will walk and gather. And that's what happens. Salary system, that's what happens. I'm not saying leave your job, but that's it. You think you're earning good money. You wait until the people at the top, you know what they're earning from your work. You are the one that will risk your life and travel to a local government and run into the bush when there is terrorism. Come back and there's somebody who goes to the office once or twice in the week inside AC. All he does is to collect reports from you. Goes to Abuja, submit it, and he's earning in millions. You, you are there and because of 150,000, you think you're earning money. I'm not saying hate your job, but I'm just saying this is, this is the mindset you must have so that you will not stay satisfied and comfortable with that level. Give us verse 26. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight, but to the sinner he gives the work of gathering and collecting. Why? That he may give to him who is good before God. Somebody say, well, transfer. That's God's desire. So all that God will give us is the strategy, the intelligence, the know-how, so that we create a system that allows the world to begin to work and lay it up. Because when we are saying wealth transfer, we are not just saying you sit down, money will appear in your account. No. It takes high level of intelligence and knowledge. You have to display a level of intelligence that dumbfounds the man who is laboring so that all that he has gathered he can submit to you why because there's something called work smart the bible says god gives it to the one who is good and you and i are good before him so if you think that all that god has for you is for you to keep sitting down nine to five eight to five no sir that can be the starting point but that's not the ending no no you are still behaving like the 21 the 21st verse the Bible says what he gives to us is knowledge and wisdom and joy. Meaning that strategies by which we can create supernatural streams of income. And the systems are generating income on themselves. You don't know. You are just too happy serving God. And your account is reading by the minute. Don't say it's not possible because the, the world's richest billionaires, that's what they are doing. Somebody created Facebook. That was not enough for him. He bought WhatsApp. And then you and I are contributing his money. Because every time you go online, something is entering his account by the minute. All he does is to stay one place and the money is coming in. The Bible says, when you see that kind of thing happening, it may be the enemy stole that idea from God. Because it was supposed to be like this in the kingdom. That God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner the work of gathering and collecting so demolish that hustling mentality from your mindset there has to be a way there has to be a way to the top so what are the qualifications for access to kingdom wealth transfer number one let's rush this and then we'll pray number one what qualifies you and gives you access to this kingdom wealth transfer agenda you must be born again number one because it comes to heads of salvation. 
the bible says what is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches it has to come to those who are heads of salvation number two you must be totally surrendered to the government of god under the lordship of christ you must be totally surrendered to the government of god <laughs> God will not just carry wealth and give to a selfish Christian. No way. That's why the basic minimum requirement is tithing. If you can't do well with tithing, you will remain in one level with your finances. The resources are readily available in God, but you must pass the faithfulness test. And it takes a man who is totally surrendered to the government of God, where Jesus Christ is Lord over your heart. God can wake you by 12 midnight and say, I want that 100,000 your account. And there's no argument. That's true lordship. Not the one that you stay for two weeks. Beef God, beef God. And when you see that God finally won, you struggle and squeeze. No, 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 no. no. You, the, we, if, if you carry on with that, you can't be qualified to enter this category. You can't. God is looking for dead men. Men who are dead. Who realize that both them and everything they have belongs to him. Whose I am and whom I serve. All that he has given to me. I told God last year when he was teaching me this. I said, I said Lord, may there never be a time where there is anything you gave me that I can't give you. Never. And I mean never. Never. I know he's still testing me. But with the little test he has given me over the years, I think I've passed. Because there are things we can't share with you. Totally surrendered. Dead to self. Number three. Must be given to the advancement of the kingdom. And the well-being of humanity. Must be given to the advancement of the kingdom. And the well-being of humanity. Proverbs 28 verse 8. Where we read. He says he that increaseth his treasures by usury and extortion gathers it up for him that has pity over the poor you must be given to the well-being of humanity god will look for people he can trust with the wealth of nations i was watching this man the, the ceo of epis on channels television um, um what's that his name alan oyema or something like that i was watching him on Ch channels television uh, talking about his airline and everything and i was shocked to hear what he was saying I pray that man is a kingdom man. Because he said the reason why he that airpiece was founded was so that he can create jobs for many Nigerians. And so till date, his staff are still collecting pre-COVID salary. You know what that means? Because of the COVID pandemic, many organizations slash the pay of their staff. But he's still paying them as though there was no COVID-19. That's someone who has the interest of people at heart. Even if you are anointed with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, How can you, having this world's goods, see your brother in need? And you bid him farewell and say, God bless you. Go, God provide for you. And you had it. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. The highest I can tell you is, I don't have it that time. But there is no way I have it in my... Even if it's to clear all. I don't know the thing about my conscience. I pray God will help me with it. But even if it is all that I have in my account, and you come to me for it, I can't sleep. My conscience won't allow me. And you see, many Christians are sadly not there. Because let me tell you something. God, it takes maturity to, to enter into the inheritance that are laid up for us there are criteria there are things that god will test in your life some of you have been going through that test for years now you don't know and you want god to give the wealth of nations to a man who common first fruit is too big to give god all of these things are basic things what if god comes to you and say give me half of your salary for one year i know a man of god who said when the you know him from south africa he said when they were trying to buy a land for their headquarters after giving everything he would give he told god that for the next six months he was working with a bank i think he was a manager for the next six months he will give god everything that comes to him from that bank he gave all of that sold stuff in his house till he was sleeping on the ground on the ground with his one year old son i said even me i can't do that one 
That's why when you join people and criticize them driving, flying their jets, you don't know their sacrifice. And I hope you know when you talk bad against a man that is powered by the Holy Ghost, you, you started digging your own grave. Nobody just rises like that. Whether God or Satan, there are sacrifices. So he must be one who is given to the advancement of the kingdom and the well-being of humanity. Finally, this teaching will not end properly. If I don't tell you the ways by which we can enter into this mysterious wealth transfer agenda. A man of God said in this country, and I respect his opinion, because they are scriptural, that there are three major ways by which you can come into wealth. Transactional wealth, which is the reward of value given to your goods and services. There's transformational wealth, which is the reward you receive for lifting others or for building others. But then there is wealth called sovereign wealth. Wealth that is mysteriously by the hand of God. And I want to give you a dimension of how that wealth operates. Wealth by the sovereign hand of God. Because if you stay on transactional and transformational wealth, it's still limited. There has to be a wealth that is not controlled by the economy of this world. Where there is no dropping. The Bible says the, the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. There is such a thing called sovereign wealth. Where God places his hand upon a man. And you cannot understand his wealth. You cannot quantify it. There's such a thing. Last year, during the lockdown, in an encounter with the Lord, God shared with me seven ways. I will share just one with you today. And I pray that God, before the end of this year, will give me the opportunity to share the remaining six. And guess what? What I'm about to share with you, when God told me about it, I started seeing everything working in my life. Everything. That it is possible that you don't stay 24 hours without being blessed. It is possible. It is true. It is true. Where you can stay and receive money from people who don't know you or people who have not seen you. It is true. I've seen it. Some of these things, it is by revelation you enter into it. I'm telling you. Sovereign wealth. One way, and we'll pray, by prophecy by prophecy you want to understand mysterious wealth in the place of the kingdom there is a connection between prophecy and wealth and I'll share it with you and we'll pray there are many others I would have loved to share with you but there is no time for that maybe another time this year there are six others apart from this one but there is such a thing called wealth by prophecy the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20:20, 20, 20, Believe the Lord your God, so shall he be established. Believe his prophets, and what will happen? You will prosper. It is natural that part of what the prophetic communicates is the ability to prosper. It is part of it. Any man that carries that anointing can translate it to people. Because let me tell you the truth. There are forces controlling the natural systems you see in this world. So you need to understand something that usurps the authority of those forces and will force the system to work for you even when it is failing for others. It's called prophecy. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. It says, by a prophet the Lord led the children of Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved. Meaning that the anointing that was upon Moses was enough to sustain the economy of an entire nation. Over 3 million people. One man's grace. You think it's ordinary? Unfortunately, especially in, the north, in northern Nigeria, we, we trivialize the prophetic. But let me tell you something. There is such a thing as a grace to prosper. And you know what I realized recently? Every believer is a child of God, but not every believer has a prophet. I realized it recently. Because the Bible says, there were many widows in Israel, but to none of them, but was Elijah sent save the widow of Zarephath you know why Israel suffered during the time of the three and a half years because there was no prophet sent to them they were hidden prophets but they were not authorized to speak and command prosperity none carried the grace and investment spiritually that Elijah carried 
And because Elijah was sent to another nation, prosperity happened there. You know what Elijah told that woman? He said, make bread for me first. The woman said, man of God, all we have is just for me and my son to eat and die. Elijah said, you don't understand. The person who locked the rain in heaven for three and a half years is here. That rain is inside of me. If that rain had fallen, your grains would have grown and produced a harvest for you to make bread. But I am here. Feed me first and watch how that rain will supply your family. And the Bible says she did it. And the oil of or the cruise of oil did not fail. And the barrel of meal did not run dry till the day. That's why I said rainy season. It, rain, it was not a season. It was a man. Chapter 18 of the same first Kings. He told Elijah, he said, go to Ahab and I will send rain. What do you think it means? That Ahab seeing a prophet means season has come. There's such a thing as the prophetic and prosperity. I'm telling you. Give us Ezra chapter 5, verse 1. Last scripture here and then we'll pray. Ezra 5, verse 1. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Edo, prophets, did what? Prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Verse 2. So Zerubbabel the son of Sheltiel and Jeshua the son of Josadak rose up and began to build the house of God which is in Jerusalem and the prophets of God were with them helping them. What was the prophets of God doing? Prophesying to them and the Bible called it help. Give us verse 8. The enemy rose up and saw that they began to prosper again after they had tried to to, you know to, to stop the work of the building of the temple he said let it be known to the king they were reporting to the king now that we went into the province of judea to the temple of the great god which is being built with heavy stones and timber is being laid in the walls and this work goes on diligently and what prospers why because there were two prophets in the camp honestly i don't know how the prophetic operates one thing I just know is that if that grace is truly on a man and he utters something to you, that grace has the ability to pressurize a territory and bring people and systems under pressure until that word is fulfilled. Look at pastor's testimony. And honestly, sir, I was joking, daddy. I, when I was telling you that thing, Inside me, I was, I was like, what are you saying? I'm telling you, sir. And I forgot. Please sit down, sir. Look at that. Now, he's a man of God too. Is it that his own anointing cannot do it? Yes, maybe for other things. But you should understand that in the, in the kingdom, you are not anointed for yourself. You are anointed for others. Me, you see me. If I need to change levels in my life, I know what to do. I'm telling you, I'm not blind. I know what to do. There are certain voices that I have proven them over the years. If they say a thing, it must come to pass. And I know that not every believer has a prophet. So what do I do? Pitch your tent. If you, saw, if you see something that is work, working for you, what will you do? You stay there. Chapter 6 verse 14, same Ezra. And these guys began to build because of the prophecies that were coming from the prophets. The grace for prosperity came through the prophetic. 6 verse 14 so the elders of the jews built and they prospered through the prophesying of haggai the prophet see you don't need money to build you need grace to build and that grace comes through the ministry of the prophetic i don't mean everyone called the prophet no there are some people who do call themselves prophets who are not prophets the bible says you know a prophet when he says a thing and it comes to pass why because it is not in his power there is a system of divine government backing him and god placed him in that territory so that men can meet their possession samuel told Saul, he says is it not you whom god has chosen as the commander of israel he said right now when you leave me you will find two men at the tomb of rachel and they will tell you that the donkeys your father lost have gone back to him how do you, what do you what do you put about that that a man meets another man and all of a sudden what he has been looking for for three days begins they, they those things will hear and begin to go back to their owner you think it's ordinary is such a thing as a grace if you say it's not a grace why how how does the native doctor get men to prosper 
every other thing you do is okay but truly if you want to prosper if you want to come into kingdom wealth transfer if you want to understand the mystery that manipulates money you need the ministry of the prophetic you need the ministry there will be voices that god has placed unfortunately we live in a country where or in in a continent where they sabotage they backstab their prophets the bible says oh jerusalem that killeth her prophets we live in a dispensation where these kinds of people no longer have the regard that should come to them that's the reason why some nations are poor check very poor nations no voice check Nigeria can never become poor in the whole of Africa. You know why? There are voices over these nations. There are voices over continents. There are voices over nations. There are voices over regions, over territories. And some of them may not even be known. But if they say a thing, it must happen. Why? They were authorized. Every time the children of Israel were broke, God did not just do, He did not just send food or send, He would send a prophet. They were bound in Egypt. He sent one man. I thought God would send an army. That would have been equivalent. He sent one man. And one man humbled the 12 gods of Egypt. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 12 verse 36. And they did, verse 35. He said, and they did according to the word of Moses, the man of God. In verse 36, he said, and they went to the Egyptian neighbors and collected gold and silver from them. And they spoiled the Egyptians. Why? A man spoke. Jesus when he fed them with five loaves and two fishes in John chapter 6 what did they say about him they said this is the prophet that is to come ah there is such a thing as the prophetical I'm telling you brothers and sisters go to school and read book do your work very well do your business very well but you want to prosper look for a prophetic voice I'm not talking about hanky panky I'm not talking about people who just carry the name I'm talking about trusted voices People that can look at your situation you lost you just lost 100,000 they'll tell you in one more time you are going to it will be restored and it happens like that that is the only supernatural way otherwise Satan will make rubbish of anything we gather don't you know that there is something called the devourer that there is a spirit that goes around men that can make that it steals their resources so the man is any money but he doesn't know what he does with it my answer to that man look for a voice that can call back what the devourer stole or steals where is sister comfort i hope you don't mind i'll share your testimony i hope you don't mind you forgive me many of you were there during miracle service i think this month 7th march when i prophesied to her and i, I said some things i said about vehicles i said cars isn't it was it not last sunday you showed me the car last sunday right did you bring it is it outside seventh that was on the seventh of march 21st three days 21 days or you know two weeks later i didn't share this testimony because i want to glorify myself when there is a grace you know there is a grace and tonight we are going to pray and i tell you the truth anything that the enemy has stolen from your life or your family i came to give you a good news that thing is not lost there is a place and it can be recovered there is a place and it can be restored he told, look at what he told Isaiah as we pray he said, he, he said to Cyrus in chapter 45 he said I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches who was speaking it was a prophet yes you are a king you have so much he said but yet I'm about to make you rich that there are hidden riches in secret places that you don't know as a king but it will take the prophetic to bring it let me tell you the truth if we lack this we can gain and still lose if we lack this we can gain and not know what we did with it if we lack this there is no way a little one shall become a thousand all these promises you see were bettered by the ministry of the prophetic it will take the voice of the, of prophecy to activate it i'm telling you ask your our neighbors from the other side they will tell you the truth you will not believe it but i have many muslims who come to me some even on phone for prayers 
they will not hear Jesus but they will come for prayers and sadly many of them have prayed for it has happened for them but are we ready for a release of grace this night I want you in the next two minutes to lift your voice and place a demand on heaven whatever was stolen from your life whether it is an opportunity whether material acquisitions whether resources of any kind in the next two minutes don't allow your neighbor pray for you open your mouth and call it back open your mouth and call for restoration there is such a grace and it's in this house some of you time was stolen time was wasted some of your opportunities were stolen you were qualified for it they gave it to another person he said i will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten the caterpillar the palmer worm and the locusts if it was stolen there is a place where it is hidden and it can be restored it can be recovered Come on, open your mouth and pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Call it back. Call it back. Resources, opportunities, money, position, grace, whatever it is, call it back. Even God who quickens the dead and call it those things that are not as though they were.
Hallelujah. Proverbs 13. Can we pray two more prayer points? And they will be done tonight. Proverbs 13, please. 22. Proverbs 13, 22. Let's just pray two more prayer points. Some things must be activated this night. There must be a shift in the realm of the spirit. Where we read, he said, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Meaning that what is your inheritance by default is being hidden somewhere. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father, I receive grace to enter into my possession. Grace to enter into my inheritance. Open your mouth and lift your voice and pray. It's stored up. It's hidden somewhere. I receive grace. He said, now the God of all grace. The God of all grace. If it is laid up for you, then it can be retrieved. If it is stored up, then it can be received. Come on, open your mouth, place a demand. Father, grace. 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 Wherever my wealth is hidden. Wherever my possession is laid up. By the power of prophecy. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive grace to enter into it now. Grace, grace, grace. Come on, pray. He gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. I want you to lift your voice and say, Father, cutting edge concepts, ideas, strategies by which I will, I will be open to streams of income, by which I will be open to channels of resources. Lift your voice and pray. I receive ideas. I receive concepts. I Lord, I 
Hallelujah. Listen, I like us to pray this prayer again, but in another dimension. Listen to me. Listen, listen. The Bible says this is how Isaac got his own wealth transfer. God told him so in that land because that's the land I've given to you. And the Bible says in verse 13 of Genesis 26, he said he began to prosper and prospered and became very prosperous till the Egyptians, uh, the, the, the Philistines entered him. In the case of Jacob, Laban was always tricking him. But Jacob revealed the truth. He said in Genesis 31 to his wife, he said, when the time when the cattle were made, I saw a vision and I saw cattle leaping on them. We are going to pray for the spirit of revelation. Listen, it operated, you need to read, study Genesis 30, 31. Jacob's own was mysterious. You know something I discovered today while I was reading about Jacob. Because you know, listen, we'll pray, but listen. There are about seven stages of this world transfer. First of all, it happened with Abraham. Then Isaac. Then Jacob. Then Joseph. Then the children of Israel when they were leaving Egypt. Then Solomon which is the sixth. The seventh is the end time church. The Bible says, I will cause the desires of nations to come. Haggai chapter 2 verse 7. He said, the silver and gold is mine. Jacob, there was, there was something Isaac did when he was blessing Jacob. In chapter 28 of Genesis verse 4, he told Isaac, he told Jacob this, he said, that you will inherit the land that you are a foreigner in you are a stranger in the meaning of that blessing was that not only will he inherit the land of canaan but anywhere jacob entered as a stranger was his inheritance so jacob fled to bethel he inherited bethel from bethel he fled to laban in another nation he collected all the wealth from laban everywhere he went to because there was a blessing on his life But it took the spirit of revelation. I want you to pray. And i like you to cry to God. The spirit of revelation and wisdom. I receive. Some of you, God will have to start giving you ideas in dreams and visions. Some of you, God will have to take you into trances. And show you systems. That when you put them into practice, you will, you will stumble into wealth. Lift your voice and pray. I receive supernatural grace. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. It comes upon my life now. It comes upon my mind now. Open your mouth and cry. Whether you are a student or a business person or a government worker, whatever. Pray. Pray. I see your grace and 
Five minutes and be done. I want to pray and prophesy over us. Is that okay? Listen, this this session now, it's not just possibilities that will be introduced into your life by the anointing and by the words that will be declared. But there's going to be a release of anointings and mantles. I'm telling you, something happened between me and God this week. And it's out of that that I want to release something. Just five minutes and we'll be done. Lift your hands. Now, there's going to be a bazaar of impartations. Okay? So, if you can't just help your neighbors, if, if they're under the anointing, if the ushers are not near you. But it's going to be mighty. Even some of the ushers, I'm seeing them. lift your hands. I'm still praying. Two more and we'll be done. I'm just following what the Spirit of God is showing me. Two more. My God. I'm seeing chains. That's what I'm seeing. And God is saying I must break those chains. There is a stronghold of poverty on families that must be broken lift your hands father in a name that is above every other name any family that is under that stronghold by the hand of the spirit of god i command let those chains be broken now chains of poverty be broken chains of lack be broken chains of lack be broken chains of poverty be broken be broken be broken be broken, be broken, be broken. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands down. If you are from Adama State, lift your hands. God showed me this on Thursday. Manda bala krasi badia. Put your hands down if I Adam asked they lift your hands. God showed me on Thursday. God said I should make this prayer. I saw myself in a vision making this prayer. All eyes closed. You are going to watch what will happen. God said I should break the stronghold of limitation, of obscurity that is on people from that territory. Whether you are following us online or you are on ground, lift your hands. Every stronghold that will not allow people from that territory to rise beyond a recognizable level. Rise to national level, whether finance or whatever it is. 
is about to break. Father, in the name that is above every other name. Lord, I declare, let there be a release of angels. Let the stronghold of obscurity, of limitation, of loneliness that is upon families from that territory, in the name that is above every other name, let that stronghold be broken now. Stronghold sponsored by marine spirits. Stronghold, that's it, help them. Stronghold sponsored by spirits from the forest. Marine spirits. I'm seeing, I'm seeing places where they are surrounded by rivers. And the spirit existing in those rivers have held bound the destinies of men. Father, in the name of Jesus, I conjure the mystery of the earth. I conjure the mystery of the elements to bring to judgment those spirits now. Bring to judgment those spirits now. I break those strongholds now. I break those strongholds now. I break those strongholds now. In the name of Jesus. By your blood, you crush the Now this is the last impartation I'll, I'll be done. I just wanted there are many things I would have prayed for, but I want to release it at once. We are going to shout that name Jesus. I'll count to seven. At the seventh count, shout Jesus. And there's going to be an opening in the realm of the spirit. Several graces will fall on people. I'm telling you, certain miracles like 24 hours miracles will happen after this. I'm telling you. Whatever was stolen is about to be restored. Whatever has been withheld from you is about to be released. This is the shout that will command double promotions for some people. This is the shout that will open up your destiny to the nations of the earth. Are we ready? Bring your hands down. At the count of seven, you just shout the name Jesus at the top of your voice. And there's going to be massive impartations of grace. Father, I place an anointing on this shout. Let it be to the opening of the heavens. Let it be to a release of graces over this place. Both those online and those on ground. Father, let men enter into their places in destiny. Let destinies be released. Let inheritances be accessed. Let all common anointings be accessed. By this apostolic and prophetic grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shout Jesus. your hands and give him praise. Wave your hands and just bless him. Jesus is the answer for the world today. I'm about to make an altar call. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. A moving vessel. Jesus is the way. Come on, sing it with me one more time. Say.
while all of us are standing with eyes closed, if you can't just pay attention now. The last thing we must do and we are done for tonight, if you are here and you know that you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Remember I said, one of the things that will qualify you access to this kingdom wealth transfer that the Lord has promised is that you are a hell of salvation. You must be born again. It is the wealth of the sinners that is laid up. Poverty exists in different ways, but the greatest poverty is the poverty of the soul. You are here and Jesus is not the Lord of your life. You may have been going to church, no problem. But you need to make a decision for Jesus. And you need to do it urgently. I want to give you an opportunity to make your way to the front. Or perhaps you are here and you need to rededicate your life. Probably you were born again before some things happen and you are derailed. There is an opportunity for God to give you a fresh start. Wherever you are, don't hesitate. Don't waste time. Run to the front as though there is a fire on your house now. I'll give the next 10 seconds, wherever you are. You know you need to say yes to Jesus. There's no need to be ashamed wherever you are in this hall. Walk up to the front very quickly at the count of 10. I will count 10. And if there is none, we will just close. But if you are here and the Holy Spirit has been talking to you, maybe even since the beginning of this conference, and you know it's high time you just say yes to Jesus. Or you need to rededicate again so that God can have sovereign rule over your life. Make your way to the front quickly at the count of ten. One, two, three, four, five. If they are coming, celebrate them. Six. It's a matter of destiny. It's a matter of life and death. It's the greatest choice you will make. Keep clapping, they are coming. Seven. Eight. It's true. Jesus is the only answer. It is when you replace it, your life with his life that things can work out fine. Nine. Stretch your hands towards them. Those of you in front, I want to leave you to pray. And I want you to understand that this is the greatest info decision you will make whether you are rededicating or you are giving your life afresh i want you to say these words after me a minute from your heart say lord jesus i believe you died and rose again for my sins i acknowledge i'm a sinner and i ask that you wash me with your blood therefore in the name of jesus I declare that from henceforth I am a child of God I am born again I receive the life of Jesus Christ in Jesus name father bless them I thank you because from henceforth they receive your life in their spirits they receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness I declare from today that sin loses its grip over their lives I decree and declare that they will go from glory to glory, forward ever and backward never, in the name of Jesus. I declare that every day of their life, the Lord gives them victory over sin, victory over Satan, victory over guilt, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we celebrate God for them? That's awesome. Now, listen, let me tell you something before I hand you over to our officers. Listen to me. We are used to saying you give your life to Christ. But the truth is even the life you give to Christ dies. Because there's nothing God can do with that life. But then out of his amazing love he gives you his life. His spirit comes to live in you. And that is what has happened now. Your past is forever forgotten before God. It's a new chapter. Who you were, who you are now is different from who you were when you came out here. Okay? And I want you to know that you are born again. And it's going to be from glory to glory. Amen. So please, I'll just lead you to our officer there. He will take your contact, admonish you, pray with you. And you'll join us to close the service. Is that okay? Please just follow him. Celebrate them. <laughs> Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.